What's going on guys? Austin Zayback here with another YouTube video. And if you're brand new to my channel, I'm typically talking about business, finance, and real estate. And today we have a special video for you. Where I'm going to talk everything credit. And now credit is very, very important. So before you click off the video and you're like, Austin, you know, screw this. I, I wasted my time by clicking on the title and clicking on the thumbnail. Okay. I promise you, you didn't. So definitely stay to the end of the video because credit will literally make it or break it for you in your life. So let's just be real for a minute. I feel like there are so many benefits to having a good credit score that I would be a fool not to take just a quick second and just remind you of the benefits of just having a phenomenal credit score. Now there's a lot of them, so I'm just gonna talk about just a couple of them, but obviously you get low interest rates on all of your loans and all of your credit cards. You have a way better chance of getting approved if you wanna go buy a home or if you wanna go rent an apartment. And not only do you have a better chance of getting approved, but you'll also, again, get a way lower interest rate. You probably heard right now if you're watching the video in 2021 that interest rates in the real estate industry are at an all-time low, okay? You get to take advantage of those low interest rates only and only if you have good credit. You get qualified for all of the best credit card deals. Okay, so you've watched all these different YouTube videos on the Amex and the Chase Sapphire and all these different credit cards and the reality of it is if you don't have good credit, you don't qualify for any of those good deals and you don't get to take advantage of all the sign up bonuses of those good deals. The next time you go to rent an apartment or you go to buy a house, you don't have to put a security deposit down when you wanna go ahead and get your utilities turned on depending on how good of a credit score you have, okay? I mean, I could just keep on going forever and ever on um, why it is that you need a good credit score. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you too. You can also brag about it a little bit. I mean, you go out to your friends, you go out to, you know, eat dinner, you go do your thing. You can be like, look, you know, I got an 800 credit score. Okay. And that I'm not going to lie deserves a little bit of, you know, you just get a little bit of respect. You got a little swagger. Okay. So look, we're just going to go ahead and break down in the video, everything that affects your credit score, how it's calculated and ultimately how you can get a perfect perfect credit score, or at least a near perfect credit score, or at least at the very minimum, go ahead and increase your score from where it's at to maybe, I don't know, a hundred points or so higher than where it's at right now. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I'm trying to crack the code on the YouTube algorithm because I feel like I have decent content and I feel like everybody and their mom should smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Drop a comment down below and we should go viral any day now, but we're struggling a little bit. So if you could just do me a huge favor and just smash that like button for me, it would mean the world. And let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. So there's two main models of how your credit score is actually calculated, okay? The Vantage score and the FICO score. And a lot of you are probably more familiar with the FICO score, but I wanna talk to you a little bit about the Vantage score as well and the difference between the two. But really the main difference is they just use a little bit of different metrics to come up with your overall score and creditors get to use whatever one they want. So the Vantage score actually came out in about 2006, version 1.0. They came out with a version 4.0 in 2017. It's a little bit newer, and FICO has been around since about 1989. And there's a couple of new versions out, like version 8 and version 9, okay, which uh, version 8 launched in 2004, and version 9 launched in 2014. And again, creditors get to kind of test out different models to see what model they like the best, okay? So don't overthink it too much, but we're going to just break break down the main factors that kind of go into each individual score and then the weighted average, the percentage of how much each individual factor weighs in on your overall score. So that ultimately by the end of the video, you know exactly what to focus on. I mean, you can literally write down a couple of goals and within you know a week, uh, two weeks, a month, whatever the case is, you can ultimately focus your energy on the things that are going to matter the most. So if you're watching the video, I can assume assume that you already know why it's important to have a good credit score as we just talked about the benefits, right? But the main thing that creditors are looking at is your likelihood to miss a payment, right? Your likelihood overall to either miss a payment or to pay on time. I mean, that's the main thing that they care about, right? And the higher the score that you have, the more likely you are to pay on time and the more likely you are to be responsible. So they award the people with the highest credit scores with pretty much everything good in life, okay? So again, to keep it really simple, that's all creditors care about. 
So both the Vantage 3.0 and 4.0 and also the FICO score range from 300 to 850, okay? So 300 is the lowest possible score you can have and 850 is the highest possible score that a person can have. And if you're curious as to what like good credit would be considered as on the FICO side of things, typically, and again, it depends on the creditor, okay? So really does just kind of vary. It is a little bit subjective, but typically a 670 credit score with the FICO uh, model would be considered a good credit score and about a 700 with the Vantage score. So the different things that we're about to talk about are gonna be weighted a little bit differently depending on your creditor and depending on what score model they're using to determine your overall credit score, whether you, they're using Vantage score or FICO, okay? But the main categories are similar. They're just weighted differently depending on the creditor and each category kind of has a little bit of a different breakdown of to things that actually make up that overall category, okay? But let's just go ahead and run through them real quick. So the first and foremost thing you probably could have guessed is obviously payment history. Now, you know, again, every creditor wants to know that you're going to pay on time. You know, what are the odds? They look at your credit and, and they want to know, you know, what are the odds that this person doesn't pay on time? You know, what are the odds that he misses or she misses a payment in the next, you know, 30, 60 or 90 days? And obviously you want those odds to be as low as possible, right? You do not want to ra like raise a red flag and then be like, okay, yeah, this person's pretty likely to miss a payment. You don't want that, okay? Your credit score is going to be very low as a result of that. So this is where, you know, they're going to tally everything up. You know, have you made all of your payments on time over the course of how long, right? You know, all of these things are going to weigh into it. Have you ever missed a payment? Have you made payments late? If you did miss a payment, how many payments total did you miss in comparison to the total amount of payments you've ever made in your life, right? Across all of your different accounts, okay? If you made a late payment, how late was the payment? How many late payments did you make? Have you ever gone through a bankruptcy, okay? These are all things that ultimately affect your credit score. And again, they're really gonna look at this and they're really gonna look at the individual nitty gritty things so what I can tell you overall is just don't miss a payment. Don't be late on your freaking payments. I mean, come on. I mean, we live in 2021. You know, make sure that you set everything up on automatic payments. Even if you set up an automatic payment for the bare minimum payment that you've got to make monthly, and then if you want to go in manually and uh, pay additional money off on your credit card or your student loan or your car or whatever it is, then definitely go ahead and do that. Depending on what model you're looking at, whether it's Vantage or whether it's FICO, and again, it will vary just a little bit, but I want to say a pretty healthy average to kind of consider as to how this weighs in on your overall credit score is I would just assume that your payment history is going to weigh in at about 35% of your overall credit score, okay? Now, basically what I'm saying is the next four categories that we're gonna talk about, the next four, including payment history, are gonna add up to 100% of your total credit score. So the way that I understand payment history, okay, again, is that it takes the total of every payment you've ever made, right? Every credit card you have, every car payment you ever have, every auto loan you've ever had, all your mortgage payments if you own a house, you know, whatever it is, anything that you've financed, anything that you owe a lender, that you owe a, you know, a credit or whatever the case is, you know, that will be your total number of payments. So actually my total number of payments is like 250. Okay. So far in my life. Now I don't have a ton of credit cards or anything like that, but I do got, I probably got like seven or eight credit cards or something like that. Okay. So out of 250 payments, I've made 250 payments on time. So my payment history is obviously a hundred percent. Okay. Now what's really interesting about payment history and the reason you never want to miss a payment. And I would make this your number one focus. If you could have one focus of your overall credit and making sure that you maintain or build a good credit score is do not miss a payment, okay? Now, if you've already missed a payment or two, don't miss any more, okay? If you miss one payment, you literally drop into a different tier where it's like 99% of payments have been made on time and that 1% will dramatically affect your credit being that that overall category weighs in roughly at about 35% of your overall credit score kind of makeup. Now I've heard through the grapevine, okay, and I'm just gonna touch on this really quick before we kind of move on, that if you do miss a payment, okay, now you can't do this obviously time and time again, but through the grapevine, and don't take it from me, okay, consult with whoever you gotta consult with, try it out on your own, do your own thing, but I've heard through the grapevine that if you miss a payment, you can typically call the creditor and you can negotiate with them and you can apologize. Sometimes you've got to like write a letter, like a handwritten letter and mail it to them on why you missed your payment, why it isn't going to happen again. 
and request that they take that off of your credit report. And I've heard a lot of times, and again, they'll only typically do this one time, that they will remove a missed or a late payment off of your credit report again if it's just one time. And again, don't take it from me, I've just heard it through the grapevine. Moving right along to the second category that kind of makes up your overall credit score, and that is, uh, and people call this different things, okay? So some people call it credit utilization, other people call it credit usage. And depending on what model is looking at your credit, whether it be the Vantage score, whether it be the FICO, they, they both are, are similar, but they are a little bit different, okay? Um, the credit utilization or the credit usage will probably probably make up about roughly 30% of your overall credit score. The way that you can figure out your overall credit utilization or your credit usage is to divide your overall balances, okay, combined by your overall limit. So let's just say you've got five credit cards and all five of them have a $10,000 limit, okay? And so you have a total of about $50,000 worth of open credit line, okay? And let's just say, for the sake of the video, you're using $10,000 worth of that credit at any given time. So you would divide 10,000 by 50,000, which would give you about a 20% utilization rate. Now, I've done a ton of research on this and I've played with this over the years, okay? I, you know, most experts, and again, it depends on kind of where you look, what model you're using, again, you know, it will vary a little bit when you're looking at a Vantage score model versus a FICO score model, and then depending on the creditor and depending on the other variables, everything kind of plays in um, a little bit differently, okay? But depending on who you ask, they'll tell you that you never want to go above a utilization of 30%. So at any given time, you don't want to max out your credit cards, okay? That is the wrong thing to do. You see a lot of people that just go max out their card at Gucci and Louis Vuitton, and they're just buying freaking bare bricks, and they're just buying everything you could possibly imagine. And that isn't necessarily a good idea, like basically ever, okay? So you don't wanna ever go above 30%. Now, depending on who you ask, they'll tell you that you wanna stay even below 30, okay? Um, you know, and I've heard a lot, and I've, I've done tons of research over the years, but I've heard mixed rumors. I've even seen mixed things for myself, okay? Uh, but somewhere, in my humble opinion, okay, again, my humble opinion, I think that you wanna have a utilization at any given time between about 1% and 9%, okay? I've seen, depending on the model being used on my credit in particular, that if I go above about a 9% utilization and I carry that over into the next month, the following month, my credit score will fluctuate downwards just a little bit. Not much, and that is a little bit normal for your credit score to fluctuate day by day, just a little bit, but again, you wanna be very careful. Now, another thing you wanna be careful about is you wanna be careful about leaving a zero balance for a long period of time, and the reason why is because sometimes if you have a zero balance for a long period of time, they'll just close out the account, and all of a sudden, you're like, what the heck? They just closed out my account for no freaking reason, and this has happened to me numerous times. It's happened to everybody with a credit card, I guarantee you, at one time or another, and the problem with that is, is now your overall credit limit is going to decrease by the amount of which that account was uh, in total, right? Which is what? Which is going to increase your overall utilization and it's also going to decrease the amount of total accounts that you have, which we're gonna talk about here in just a little while. So you've obviously just gotta look at a couple of the big reasons why creditors care so much about the first two things that we talked about. And again, it's hard to say exactly with the different models out there, exactly what percentage they weigh into your credit score. So again, take that with a grain of salt, but I wanna say, you know, uh, fairly confidently that, you know, payment history and credit utilization or credit usage is gonna make up probably 60 to maybe even 70%. I mean, somewhere between there, okay? You know, like 35% uh, for payment history and about 30% I know is what I said for utilization or usage. But again, somewhere in that ballpark and they're huge, okay? Because this tells them a, a lot about who you are and how you kind of go about, you know, overall uh, spending your money. Are you responsible? Do you make your payments on time? You know, somebody gives you $100,000 worth of limit, do you use the 100 grand or do you use like five grand, right? And, and overall, that shows them kind of the psychology of who you are as a person, whether we like it or not. But another thing you can do over time is just develop, you know, have multiple different credit cards that make up a higher overall limit so that overall your utilization that you want to use on a monthly basis 
this is lower in comparison to your overall limit, okay? So you see a lot of people, you know, although maybe you only like technically need one credit card, you know, maybe over time you get two, three, four, or five credit cards that will benefit you in different ways, you know, maybe some for your travel and your hotels and stuff like that, and maybe some, you know, that work really well at grocery stores or with food or with gas or whatever, and use them for various things, but ultimately make up a higher credit uh, limit so that overall your utilization is lower. But again, that is not something you wanna do all at once and you definitely wanna do that over time and you wanna be uh, very intentional about going about that. So another one we're gonna talk about just really quick and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this one because I wanna keep on moving is length of your overall credit history, okay? Now, again, depending on what uh, score model you're using, this will have a little bit of a different effect on your overall credit. So, uh, you know, I'll just say somewhere maybe between like five and 10%, but again, uh, you know, this is gonna be very important and this is why I tell a lot of people, hey, the day you turn 18 years old, the best thing you can do is go get yourself a credit card. You know, even if it's a secured credit card, you've gotta, you know, literally hand them $500 in order to get a $500 credit card and then eventually they give your money back to you and make it an unsecured credit card. You know, do that, right? Because you know, you wanna start building your credit as early as you possibly can. So if you're watching the video and you're 18 years old, you're 19, you're 20, you're 21 years old, but even if you're older, obviously, but especially if you're younger, you know, don't make the mistake of not getting a credit card early on because, you know, you're gonna look back when you're 25, 30 years old, and if you did it when you were 18, 19, 20, then you're gonna have like 10 years of credit history, and that is gonna play a, a decent role in your overall credit score. So another factor that definitely impacts your overall score, and this is one that we already kinda touched on, so I'm gonna spend a very small amount of time on it, is a new credit, okay? Now new credit, you know, probably, and again, depending on the model, makes up, you know, five to 10% of your overall score. And this is what I was talking about a little while ago. You don't want a bunch of brand new open accounts. You don't wanna just go apply for a bunch of stuff all at once, okay? Number one, you're gonna get a lot of either uh, soft or hard inquiries on your credit, but number two, uh, your overall age of your of your credit history is gonna go down because they're figuring your your average age, right? So if you've got one account that's 10 years old, but you then you go get your second account uh, right now, and it's uh, one day old, then your, your average credit history is five years, right? Because it takes the average between 10 years and one day, so it's five years. So you wanna make sure that you don't have a bunch of brand new ones, because it'll bring your it'll bring your average way, way, way down, and you wanna be very careful of that. And also, it kind of tells creditors too, if you just go apply for a bunch all at once, that you know, it kind of raises a red flag. It's like, well, why do you need a bunch of credit all at once? I mean, what, what, what are you in like a bunch of trouble for? You know, what are you trying to buy right now? And kind of what's going on in your life? And overall, that raises a red flag. We're fighting the good fight with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it if you would just take a quick second and just smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Also, drop me a comment down below and make sure to subscribe by the end of the video. I would greatly appreciate it. And number five, kind of the fifth thing that we're really gonna talk about here is your overall credit mix. And this really is just the mix of your overall different accounts, okay? So, you know, all of your credit cards are obviously gonna fall into one category. Your auto loans are gonna fall into another category. Your uh, ho home loans or having a mortgage is gonna fall into another category and so on and so forth, okay? So, you know, you really don't wanna just have like a bunch of credit cards and no auto loan and no home loan or anything else. I mean, you really want to diversify the different types of accounts that you have. And obviously, this is gonna be a little bit hard to do if you're 18 years old because you're probably not buying a house right this second. And maybe you're not, like, you don't need a car. And I definitely wouldn't want you to go buy a car just to, like, develop your credit, okay? So, uh, you know, definitely go out. Don't go out and do anything like that. But, you know, over time, you wanna develop different types of credit and you really wanna show creditors and you wanna show the different credit bureaus that you're responsible not only with your credit cards but also also with your car, also with your house, and also with anything else, okay? You really wanna show them that, and that'll be really crucial to your overall credit score and how good of a score you actually have. So those are the main categories that really make up your credit score, okay? Again, it ranges anywhere from about 300 to about 850. There's different scoring models out there, and the different scoring models score your score a little bit differently. They they, they score your score, okay? We'll just, we'll just keep it at that, but yeah, they do. They, they actually do. They, they rate your score differently, okay? Now, I would say that if you could get above probably a 740 or a 760 in credit, you're doing amazing, okay? Like, that is just phenomenal credit in anybody's opinion, I would assume. 
Um, and you know, again, anything above it, probably a 720, I would say is pretty good credit, okay? So you wanna just work on it. You wanna work on making your payments on time, having a, a low utilization, having different types of credit, having a good length of history, having, you know, different, uh, ju you, you really just wanna focus on what we talked about, okay? So again, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video. I know it was a long video. I really appreciate you if you're watching to the very end of it. It means the world to me. If you haven't already, again, go ahead and comment down below, like the video, make sure to subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.